So Godox were kind enough to send me their FV150 daylight balanced LED light to try out for a review. I don't really want to go too much into the nitty gritty technical details of the unit itself, but instead explain the advantages to having a light like this and show you some shots where I've used it and how these shots were lit. The main draw of the FV150 is the ability to change between a continuous light and a strobe light, so it's ideal for video and photo use. It's really useful to be able to immediately switch between continuous and flash, considering a lot of photographers also shoot video and vice versa, and it opens up the possibility for anyone of either profession to start learning the other. The FV150 has a Bowens mount. For photographers, that means any accessories you might already have for your strobes can also be used with this light. For videographers and cinematographers, the Bowens mount is becoming the standard for this type of LED in a similar price range. So in terms of modifiers, you're covered for both video and photo. It's a 150 watt light. The specs say this is 12,000 lux at 1 meter, which is a fair bit brighter than Aperture's 120D Mark II. It's a good amount of power. I've actually used it in cloudy weather to light a day for night shot. The flash function output is rated by Godox to be three times brighter than the continuous light. So if you're shooting photos with a continuous light and it's not bright enough, the flash function most likely will be. The light is geared more towards studio usage, as there's no dedicated battery adapter. It's not impossible to use this outdoors though. You could do this easily with the sort of portable generator battery that you take camping. So let's take a look at some ways you can use a light like this, as a photographer learning video, or a cinematographer learning photo. In the shoot, we were taking promotional photos using a flash mode on the FE150, with a large gridded octobox attached. We wanted something a little more dramatic, so we chose to shoot in a studio setting where we could underexpose our background and have it fall to darkness while lighting our talent. We also decided to add some smoke rising up from the bottom of the frame for effect. To add some more interest and light the smoke better, we also added in a continuous backlight. We were happy with how the photos were turning out, and decided to switch it up and grab some video. The fact that we were using a hybrid LED light allowed us to do this really easily. All I had to do was press a button, rather than switch in another light and mess around changing modifiers. From the standpoint of a photographer getting into video, this is great. You know how to light a dramatic photo like this, so switching to video, nothing's really changed. Your lighting setup is the same, your modifiers are the same, your general shot is the same. We shot in slow motion and had our model walk into focus and look up as the smoke machine fired out the smoke. So using a hybrid flash and continuous LED unit, we've managed to shoot a photo set and grab some video with matching lighting setups. This is perfect practice for photographers getting into video and a really good way to grab extra material from photo shoots. So what about the other way around? We shot this candlelit scene using the FE150 once again, gelled with a full CTO with a gridded octobox attached. We wanted the light to be soft, but the overall scene to be dark, so we used a large source with the octobox and used the grid to control the light and only cover a small area. We also used an extra daylight balanced LED bounce off the ceiling, turned right down for a tiny amount of fill light. To replicate the flickering light of the candles, it was a simple case of manually dialing the output of the FE150 back and forth using the dial on the back of the unit. We then decided to take some photos using the same lighting setup used for the video. 
Now we could have just used a continuous light for these photos, but instead we switched over to flash. Our cinema camera has a native ISO of 800, whereas our DSLR shoots natively at ISO 100. We'd be losing three stops of light if we carried on shooting continuous, so this was a good time to switch to the flash. Using the same lighting setup as before, we managed to get some really moody cinematic photos. For videographers and cinematographers dabbling in photography, this is a great way to take your lighting setups for video into high quality still images. Having a lighting unit that performs multiple functions to a good standard is something that wouldn't have been available just a few years ago, so I think it's great that things like this are becoming more commonplace. A hybrid LED light like this is a great way to practice your craft in making images. allowing you to switch between video and photo and learn about the differences and similarities of both mediums. It's always good to branch out, experiment and learn techniques across a whole range of mediums. Image making or otherwise. To better inform your work within your own field of expertise. If you're interested in how I colour grade my work, I've just added an 18 minute tutorial video to my website for just £8. The tutorial takes you through the grading process in DaVinci Resolve with two cinematic looks, a more modern punchy look and a more classical filmic look. I've also included some practice DNG files so you can grade along with the video. Head over to www.robellicinematography.com forward slash downloads to grab the video.